Hey everyone, this is Anam Chahar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be discussing the summary of lesson number one, The Portrait of a Lady by Kushwan Singh from the book Hornbill of class 11. Let's begin. In this chapter, Kushwan Singh draws a pen picture of his grandmother. He describes how he had spent his childhood with her in the village. He also describes the change that came in their relationship when they moved to the city. And finally, he describes the heart-touching scene of her death. So basically, it's a loving tribute from a grandson to his grandmother where he reflects upon the emotional bond he shared with his grandmother. After reading this chapter, the readers are forced to evaluate their own relationships with their grandparents. So it's a very heart-touching story. Let's begin. Firstly, the author describes the physical appearance of his grandmother. The author's grandmother was an old woman. She was short and fat and slightly bent. So she was bent due to her old age. Her face was a crisscross of wrinkles. She looked so old that it was difficult for the author to believe that once she had been young and pretty. She had silver hair and she used to wear spotless white clothes. She was slightly bent. She walked with one hand on her waist and in the other she had her rosary and she kept telling its beads. Kept telling its beads means all the time unke haath mein ek mala hoti thi aur wo hamesha bhagwan ka naam japte rehte the. Her lips moving in inaudible prayers. She used to say her prayers always. Although she wasn't young and pretty, but the author says that she was extremely beautiful. She was a picture of peace, serenity and contentment. And in her spotless white clothes, she looked divine and pure. So the author is saying that obviously the grandmother was not young and pretty any longer, but she was very beautiful because she looked so pure. She looked divine. The author compares his grandmother with the snow that covers the mountains in winters. So she looked as white as the snow. She looked as pure as the mountain snow. Then briefly, he talks about his grandfather as well. The author's grandfather was already dead before he was born. He had only seen him in his portrait hung on the wall. He also looked very old. So basically, the author has divided his relationship with his grandmother into three phases. The first phase of their relationship. Well, it was when he lived with his grandmother in their village. He shared a great bond with his grandmother when he was a child, as he had spent a long time with her in the village. When the author was a small boy, his parents moved to city leaving him behind in the village with his grandmother. Because obviously his parents were not settled in the city. So firstly, his father and mother went and they left them behind in the village so that they could settle, settle down in the city. During this time, they both became good friends. The author and his grandmother, they became very good friends. During this time, his grandmother took care of all his needs. She woke him up in the morning, dressed him and got him ready for school. While doing this, she recited the morning prayers loudly so that the author could also learn them. So this shows that the grandmother, his grandmother, she was very religious. Then she fed him breakfast of stale chapatis with butter and sugar. She then accompanied him to the village school. The school was attached to the temple where the priest taught them. So the school was uh, in the Gurudwara, in the temple itself. 
while the children learned alphabet the old lady read the scriptures sitting in the temple so again it shows that she was very religious and then when the author was done with his studies when his school time was done they both walked back home together feeding stale chapatis to the village dogs so basically the author was very close to his grandmother during this time see she fed chapatis to the village dogs this uh, this shows that his grandmother she was a very kind woman but a turning point came in their relationship now it's a very important question the turning point when the author's uh, parents got settled in the city they sent for the author and his grandmother they moved to the city to live with his parents although they still shared the same room but the relationship and the routine changed why because the author was admitted to an english medium school and he started going to school in a bus so in the village his grandmother used to walk him to school but now his school was uh, far away so he started going to school in a bus she continued to wake him up in the morning and uh, she would get him ready for school for some time but she couldn't accompany him to his school his grandmother was quite unhappy with the kind of education the author was getting in this english medium school he was taught english science and music for her music was meant for beggars and you know such kind of people according to her music was not meant for gentle society it was not meant for uh, you know good people she was also unhappy with the fact that nothing about the religion was taught in the school as the time passed on the author became more and more busy in his own life and his in his own studies and the grandmother got isolated but they still shared the same room there were no dogs to be fed in the city so she started feeding birds when the author joined university when he grew up and he joined university he was given a separate room and this one common link was also broken now so far they had been sharing the same room so still they were connected but when he was given a room of his own this common link this common link the room was also broken grandmother was left alone and she accepted her seclusion quietly she did not crib about her situation she did not blame anyone she just accepted the situation quietly she said nothing she never complained and now she spent most of her time in spinning the wheel spinning the wheel means charkha katna and reciting her prayers she hardly talked to anyone she stopped talking for her the happiest time of the day was when she fed bread crumbs to birds when she uh, fed bread crumbs to sparrows every afternoon that half an hour was the happiest time for her when the author went abroad for higher studies she went to the railway station to see him off and she kissed his forehead her lips still moved in prayers the author cherished it as the last physical contact between the two when the author returned after 5 years she came to the railway station to receive him so this shows that how excited how happy she was when he came back she celebrated his homecoming the next day the next day uh, when the author returned she gathered uh, the women of the neighborhood in the evening and for several hours she sang prayers beating an old drum 
she overstrained herself the next morning she was taken ill she became very sick the doctor said it was a, a mild fever but she knew grandmother knew her end was near so she didn't want to waste her time in talking she kept praying and praying she kept telling the beads until she took her last breath when her dead body was laid down in the veranda for the last rites hundreds of sparrows came to pay their last respect they sat silently without chirping they did not make any noise now usually when a uh, grandmother used to feed them they would chirp happily they would make so much of noise but today even the birds understood that the women that the woman who used to feed them she's gone forever so they were very quiet and they were very sad the author's mother threw bread crumbs to them just the way his uh, you know his grandmother did but the birds took no notice of the bread when the grandmother's body was carried away they flew quietly so this is it it's a very heart touching story uh, if you understood the lesson if you like the video then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon you can also leave comments thank you